17 minutes past nine. I mentioned a moment ago, it's National Pain Week. And part of National Pain Week is a whole lot of information coming out about people living with chronic pain in our community, including a national pain survey. More and more Australians now are dependent on some form of medication in order just to get through. And there's a call for more recognition of, for instance, medicinal marijuana in dealing with chronic pain, which is starting to gain some acceptance all over the world. But the personal stories are the ones that make us understand what it must be like to live with constant pain. And Grace Irvine is a Melbourne mum in chronic pain who has been prepared to step forward to tell her story in order to draw attention to the plight of people living with constant pain. Grace, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And this time, not by way of mere formality, but how are you? I am, I'm doing okay. I've, I'm five weeks post-surgery, so um, it's a bit of a... It's, I'm a bit sore, but I'm doing okay, yes. Surgery for what? I had um, what is called a native tissue repair, so um, pelvic surgery, vaginal surgery, so yes. And why did you need that? I needed that because I had a, um, a mesh sling um, put in for urinary incontinence three years ago. Um, and basically that is for um, prolapses and 50% of women will experience a prolapse um, after, after usually post childbirth. Multiple childbirth. Yes, that's yep. exactly right. And so you had, I think, was it three children? Three children, yes. And then you were having some urinary yes. incontinence? Yes. So by my second child, I was having urinary incontinence and I was told that I would need to have um, it all fixed, but they wouldn't fix it until I had finished my family, which is ridiculous. Um, we shouldn't have to live in... You know, wearing nappies and and all of that sort of stuff so anyway i um i went in and had this this um what i was sold as a minor procedure um with a one percent failure rate and unfortunately i um woke from the surgery with severe pain and it continued to get worse from there um describe the mesh procedure for those who are not familiar with it because it's a okay. bit hard to understand that's Chris. okay no the mesh procedure so there's there's a few different ones um the one that i had is called stress urine reincontinence sling um, um you could sometimes hear it as a hammock tape um so what it basically does is it holds up the urethra uh, supports the urethra um because the urethra slags or drops um with it's, a prolapse it's yeah straight. That's exactly right. So it holds that in place where it should be. Um, so you, A, don't wet yourself. And and for some people, you, you actually can't wee. So it holds it in place so you can, so you can urinate. Um, so the surgery itself um, is supposed to be quite a quick surgery, um, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, depending on the surgeon and the skill of the surgeon. Um, and then um, you sort of go home and um, recover. It's a six-week recovery and, and you're supposed to be good to go and not have any um, urinary issues afterwards. So unfortunately for me and for many, many women that we're seeing every day, it's it's not the case. Um, and, and, and for many, it's gone horribly wrong. In and, fact, I think yes. there's, a, there's a class action Yes, there is a class action. The, the distributors of yep. the, the mesh. And yep. we'll, we'll just park that yes. to the side. Yep. But there is, if people are, if there is a pricking up here, you can go, well, actually, there is something being yes. done about this. Yes, there is. Um, and, and I think that, that that'll continue to come the more we the more we find out about that. So um, for me personally, um, I, I experienced pain quite early on. Um, I wasn't able to urinate, so I had to use catheters um, to go to the toilet. Straight um, after surgery. Straight after surgery. But which, not before. But not before. I, I wet myself before and I couldn't urinate afterwards um, and it sort of continued to get worse from there on but the, the hard thing was getting somebody to listen to me I was really fortunate that I have a really really good GP who has been seeing me for eight years and um, could see the difference basically straight away from um, coming back from the surgery um, but to find a specialist that would actually listen was a nightmare. How many did you see? I saw about four different specialists. Um, and what were they saying to you? That it was, there was nothing wrong with me. Um, that the operation um, that I originally had, they sewed me up too tight. That was one of the things I got told. Um, that my um, my muscles were too tight post surgery, and I needed to do some muscle exercises. So it was all your fault? It was all my fault. It was in my head. I've been yelled at and abused by doctors um, and paid, you know, lots and lots of money to see them, which has been really difficult for us because we're a single income family. We've got three young kids, like so many other people that are struggling with chronic pain and and vice versa. But um, yeah, just really dismissed on um, any 
any form from any professional um and finally i found a doctor that would listen to me but uh, basically um the chronic pain um itself that I was experiencing was very it's really hard to describe and I think that's where I got stuck with trying to speak to some of these medical professions because they didn't understand it but it was very quickly um, noted when I started seeing the specialist that I'm seeing now that in fact the mesh was eroding through my vagina and through my urethra through, through. so yeah, they actually could have felt that when they did the pelvic exams for the three or four surgery uh, specialist I had seen previous to that and all the signs and symptoms I had were very consistent with a mesh injury um so uh, I had you know infections um burning pain nerve pain um all sorts of different things going on and and they, they would have known that Grace what does it do to your state of mind to see Specialist after specialist after specialist, you can feel it. You know what's going wrong, mm-hmm. but to be told, no. it's really disheartening. And, and what, I can, what effect does it have? Well, I I can definitely see why people are taking their lives because they're not getting listened to. It has a you feel like you've got where else do you go if your medical professionals aren't listening to you? You know there's something wrong with you. Your family can see that there's something wrong with you. Do you start to doubt yourself? You do. I, I 100% did. And, you know, I often said to my GP, is there something wrong with me? Is this all in my head? Do you think I'm making it up? And lucky... Am I going mad? Am I going mad? That's exactly right. And lucky I had a decent GP. Not everybody has a decent GP. People go to their GPs and say, you need to go see a psychiatrist because it's in your head. So for me, that was my life-saving moment, having that solid, fundamental GP to work with me. But unfortunately, not many people and not many women that are going through this have that. And that, where do you start? And then as well, you're on that kind of roller coaster of medical appointment, medical yes. appointment, medical yep. appointment. You're doing rehab. You're seeing probably yep. other allied professionals, yes. physios. You're wondering, yep. should I go and you know go to the gym or do some yoga yes. or whatever? Yep. Should I go overseas? A lot of women are going overseas because they feel like they're not getting the help that they're not getting heard here. So, so. from your perspective, and you speak so eloquently, I, I just I'm, I'm in awe of what you're oh, able to you. describe, and you're so prepared to share it with people for yep. the common good and yep. it's not an easy thing to talk about at no, all. So I thank not. you. And there's thank so you. many text messages saying, wow, this woman's amazing and I thank totally you. agree. What do you want to change? What message do you want to give to the medical professionals who just pushed you aside over and over again? I, I just want to see better care for women, to be honest with you, through on a whole. But, um, you know, informed consent is a massive thing that keeps coming up. Um, a better... Um, liaisoning with GPs and specialists um, and just so when when the when the specialist's report would come back to mm-hmm. your GP mm-hmm. the GP would tell you oh, okay number three number four they yeah. say no 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 what was the conversation between you and the GP about my GP's um, he's pretty funny about it he's like I don't agree with this this is not right um, we will keep going until we go he said to me very early on these doctors need to understand that Yes, they said there's a 1% failure rate, but your life has been 100% affected by this grace. And until I get, or we get, somebody that gets that, we will keep fighting. And it turns out it's not a 1% failure rate at all. It's, it's definitely much, much not. Higher than well, that. you know, even seeing the specialists, at the, I see the specialists at the Royal Women's Hospital, and they don't even promote a 1% failure rate. No, so they sure wouldn't. So yeah. let's go back to medication. Yes. Were you put on to pain relief? Yes, I was very early on. So, so how long did you take that for? I'm still on pain medication every day. Every day. Um, for I how t- long now? Um, I've been on medication for three years. I've been had the mesh in for three years, had it removed last year, and I'm still on medication. So, unfortunately, even having a removal, it doesn't mean that you're going to be pain free. Well, not um, straight away. Not straight away. One day. We're not sure. Nobody knows. It's a it's a very new area and it's a very grey area. Nobody knows the effects of what it has on the body. What happens if you stop taking the pain relief? Um, I can't function every day. I've got three little boys to look after. So you have tried? I have tried many times with the guidance of my GP. Um, and, um, I, and I'm on quite a mild medication. I'm on Panadine Fort and I also take a, a nerve block medication but compared to some people I'm on quite a mild and that's my choice. Can you taper it off? Does that um, mean? I've tried. I have tried tapering sure it off. I've tried everything. Yeah. I don't for a moment doubt yeah. it. And not for a minute do I think. Yeah. I'm doing no, no, it's definitely not. I have a clue. Yeah. But yeah. We've tried yeah. and I, I can be off it. I just, I need, to. My, my niece is a diabetic 
and she's very dependent on her medication to be able to function every day. If she doesn't have it, it's not good. I'm very dependent on my medication too. That doesn't make me a drug seeker, you know, but I, I need it to be able to, um, to, to look after my children. So something like, um, I mean, thousands of people live with chronic pain. Yes. And most of them find their treatments unaffordable and yes, have side effects yeah. and all of these things. Yeah. So Chronic Pain Australia, the umbrella group, are mm -hmm. saying, well, we stop, we, we've got to broaden our thinking. We've got to do things like try medicinal cannabis. Yes. Does that appeal to you? I think it does. I think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, so I'm a part of a mesh injured support group called Mesh Injured Australia um, on Facebook, and it's also a, um, a, a charitable um, uh, company. Um, and a lot of the women that have been trying it are coming back and they're saying that um, not only is it um, expensive, um, about $300, this is, you know, I'm not an expert on this, but about $300 an appointment, it's hard to access at the moment and the and the supply and demand is you know few and far between so i think that it's got a long way to go but it's not something that i'm opposed to a lot of people self-medicate of course yes they do they just, they just smoke a joint and say well i'm not waiting around for the doctors to get their act together and they just do. Gonna do what i need to do yes they do I, we know people who do yeah that. yeah we are, i think everybody does and so you, yeah and you've got to say well if it works good on you that's exactly right that's exactly right i think that um you can definitely see why people end up in that sort of grey area of I'm going to self-medicate and do it myself because what else can you do when you're so bad? And if you're waiting around for the regulations and yes, everyone to get exactly right. together, well, you'll be in there's, all sorts I mean, of there's trouble. waiting lists to see pain management specialists for two years. Yep. So what, what are you supposed to do in the meantime? Well, the other thing, of course, is the cost that we yes. mentioned before. Should there be some special arrangement where if indeed you're in chronic pain mm -hmm. over a period of time, then after, I don't know, a year, 18 months, two years or whatever, yeah. then you get some government assistance with the, the medication. Yes, I agree. I think there definitely should be. Obviously within guidelines, um, but um, definitely should be some form of help out there from the government. Grace, you changed, I'm sure, a lot of people's understanding of what it's all about. I, I wish you, you all the very best on behalf of all the people who are texting in. Thank and you. Uh, if this was a men's health issue, I bet you it would have been addressed ages ago, says Pam. Uh, neuroscience developments are happening, and that's true. The, mm -hmm. the, the management of pain within your brain yes. is also another area that's showing a lot of a lot of reward, and we've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicole in Lockington is a regular correspondent. I live with endometriosis, pain daily, and other than strong painkillers, which barely work. The only other thing that gives me uh, some relief is uh, well, it's a long text. Sorry, Nicole, I'm not sure I've been able to scan it fast enough and get the the gist of it. And uh, the medical profession misogynistic and paternal. Mm -hmm. So much disrespect for women's bodies and on and on the text messages go. Yes. So there we go. Tell the health minister to wear a nappy 24 hours a day and see how quickly they exactly. address these issues is another text. Or to use a catheter every just day. Just through, exactly. Yeah. Grace, I wish you all the very, very Thank best. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate on it. On the contrary. Thank you for Thank being you. prepared to talk about things. Grace Irvine, who is speaking on behalf of Chronic Pain Australia and their national survey has just come out to tr kick off National Pain Week. I'll get to more of your calls and texts. 1300